Okay, to draw the Voronoi diagram for these three points, we're going to start off first and draw the perpendicular bisector of AC. So that's the perpendicular bisector of AC and the perpendicular bisector of BC. We could have chosen AB, but these two just seemed sort of logical choice to me. Now, if you have a look at what I've just written, you've got C occurs in both. That means that those bisectors will encompass site C. Okay, so let's start off with AC. So we put this underneath here. So the perpendicular bisector of AC. All we need to do is work out the midpoint which is the average of the x's, so that's negative 5 plus negative 3 over 2. And the average of the y's, 2 plus negative 2, that's going to give us 0 over 2. So that gives us negative 8, negative 4, negative 8 divided by 2, and 0. And the other thing we need is the gradient of the line and then therefore the perpendicular. So the gradient of AC, first of all, rise over run, will give us 2, take away negative 2, over negative 5, take away negative 3, which is 4 over negative 2, which is negative 2 over 1. Now that means that the gradient of the perpendicular of AC will be, flip that upside down and change its sign, will be one half. Now we don't need to work out its equation. Um, all we need to do is uh, draw the line. So if we would wanted the point of intersection exactly, we would have to work out its equation. Right, now let's just draw that one while we're at it. So we've got a point on the line which is negative 4, 0. Um, I'm just trying to figure out a colour. I think I'll do this in blue. So negative 4, 0, which is a point on that line. We've got a gradient of for the perpendicular bisector of 1 over 2. So that means if I go across 2, I need to go up 1 to get another point. Now that's going to occur all the way across. So I could do several of those if I want to get a nice straight line. And I don't know how long that line's going to go at this stage. So I'm just going to dot it lightly. We could carry it on in both directions. But once again, I can continue that later on. So that's just sitting there at the moment. What I'm going to wait for is to see it intersect with the next one. Right, now the perpendicular bisector of BC, I have to scroll down a long way to get this in. Um, so it's a perpendicular bisector of, was it BC? Yep, of BC. So we start off with the midpoint of BC, which is BC, it will be average of the x's, negative 3 plus 3 over 0, and average of the y's, which is negative 2 plus negative 4. Hopefully that's... Oh, that other one was supposed to be over 2. I've no idea why I said over 0. And that gives us 0 for that one, so this has been nicely rigged, and negative 3. And then if we work out the gradient of BC, so this is quite a procedure, and we have to do it three times in this case. So the gradient of BC is rise over run. So it will be negative 2 take away negative 4 over negative 3 take away 3. So that gives us uh, 2 over negative 6, which is negative 1 third. So that means the gradient of the perpendicular. 
of the perpendicular bisector of BC will be flip it upside down, change its sign, so that will give us 3 over 1. So now we're going to draw that, and I'll draw this one in green. So it's got a midpoint of 0, negative 3, and a gradient of 3. So a midpoint of 0, negative 3 is down here. And a gradient of 3 means when I go across 1, I go up 3. So I actually get another point right there. If I go across 1 and up 3, I end up bang on that point on the end of the blue one. Now, that means now that C is going to be encompassed between those two lines. So I can draw a full line up to there, and we'll just carry it down a little bit, but it doesn't matter too much there. Now, it carries on up further. So for every one across, it's going to go uh, three up. Uh, what have I done wrong there? Anyway, so it's going to carry on up like this. But I should dot that. I don't know why I made it full. Because it's the dotted bit can't be part of an edge. It's already part of the edge down the bottom there. Right, the same thing will happen with the blue. I can now make this blue line full all the way up to here. And then I've got to dot it across again like that. And once again, we make that dotted. Now I'm going to label this point in here X, just so I can refer to it later on. Okay, the last thing that, well not the last thing, but the next major thing we have to do is to get the perpendicular bisector of the other two points, which is A and B. And we just do the one perpendicular bisector this time. So I'll put this over the side. So the perpendicular bisector of AB, we just need to work out the midpoint, which is uh, average of the x's, negative 5 plus 3 over 2, and 2 plus negative 4 over 2, which gives us negative 1 and negative 1. Right, and now the gradient of the actual line AB will be rise over run. So it will be 2 take away negative 4 over negative 5 take away 3. Which is 6 over negative 8 which is negative three quarters. So that means the gradient of the perpendicular bisector of AB will be, tip it upside down, change its sign, four thirds. So I need another color here. I'm gonna put red, or that's gonna look a little bit dramatic. Um, so it's going to go through negative 1, negative 1, and a gradient of 4 thirds. So negative 1, negative 1 is over here. Gradient of 4 thirds means that when I go across 3, I need to go up 4. And that, miraculously, will put me right on that point there. Now this time, when I draw my line, I can't draw a full line in the space between the blue and the green lines because we know that they're borders for sort for cell C. I'm going to dot it all the same, but ultimately, if you were drawing a nice neat diagram, you could leave those dotted lines out completely. So we had a gradient of 4 over 3, so I'm just going to do 3 across and 4 up to get another point there. And this one will be a full line. Now, that actually gives us the boundaries we want already. We've got A stuck between the blue and the red. We've got C stuck between the blue and the green. And we've got B stuck between the green and the red. Now, the reason I drew that full one up there was the line would be totally superfluous if it had dotted line all the way through. We've already dotted the other bit. So we can just construct it like that in this particular diagram anyway. Um, but 
if you want another check on the lines, then A has to be between the perpendicular bisectors of AC and AB. It's got to have A occurring twice, so it has to be the perpendicular bisectors of AC and AB. So I'm just going to write this underneath here. So A must be between the perpendicular bisectors of AB and A. C. So it's got to have an E occurring, an A, sorry, occurring on both of them. So A must be between those. Now the perpendicular bisector of AB, if you were to look at the diagram, is the red line. And the perpendicular bisector of AC, AC must be the blue line. So we've got it exactly in the right place. And we can do the same for B if we wish. Uh, we won't worry about C, we already know that C's in the right place. So if we do B, it will be between, this time, the perpendicular bisectors that have got B in. So the perpendicular bisector of AB and the perpendicular bisector of BC. So here we've got B, I'm just going to find some green to highlight it, and we've got two Bs here. So the perpendicular bisector of AB if we look at it again, it's the red line. The perpendicular bisector of BC is the green line, so it has between the green and the red, and it is indeed. So we've got it correct. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.